Welcome. We're on location here at the Christian Retail Association, and uh, Carolyn Goat is here with us today, and she's subbing for Barbara, who's on vacation, and good to have you here. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. I feel pretty <laughs> special sitting in Barbara's seat today. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought everybody's going to think I'm Barbara. I've just grown my hair out, you know? Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you what, you've been such a blessing to us. and. Our guest today, many of you will remember from the NFL days, uh, David Tyree is here with us, and he has written a book called More Than Just a Catch. Mm -hmm. And David, welcome to the program, and welcome oh, to Central Florida. Man, I'm truly excited to be here. I've been hanging out down in Orlando, uh, getting a little bit of Disney in with the kids, uh, but you know, it's a special moment and uh, getting to share a little bit of my story with the rest of the world. David, you have been uh, recognized, and I think justly so, as uh, one of the NFL's most distinguished players. Tell us about the big catch that everybody remembers you yeah, about. Yeah, the big catch. Um, you know, I give us a quick sneak peek. Um, you know, um, the night before the Super Bowl, my mother uh, actually prophesied that uh, you know that that guy was going to give me the big catch. And uh, you know, so when I catch the touchdown, which no one cares to talk about in the fourth quarter of the game, I just really thought that that was it. And uh, lo and behold, you know, God is so so big. You know, Ephesians three and twenty. Um, you know, way past what my mind could think. It, you know, I end up catching this ball on my helmet uh, after Eli escapes three guys, and he, you know, usually he can hardly jump rope, um, and you know, hurls the ball up. Um, the guy with the worst, for, you know, vert vertical jump on the team, uh, you know, goes up and pastes a, you know, a helmet on the side of you know, the ball towards the side of his helmet. Um, absolutely divine. And, uh, now, what year was that, David? What's, what Super Bowl? Um, this is Super Bowl 42. This, 42? this past, you know, obviously this past year, yes. and uh, you know, the, just a memorable season. Not just uh, you know, in that one. Uh, that one play, but just the whole season and how God has mm -hmm. led this team, uh, this New York Giant team. You know, the last, the, probably the last team that anybody would have picked to be Super Bowl champions. Mm -hmm. But that's what He does. He takes the low things of the world and put the shame to why. That's right. Hey, Amen. Well, that just, it blows my mind. I was watching it last night. Mm -hmm. I had to go watch this catch again yeah. just to be refreshed, and it still blows my mind to see how you grabbed it. Yeah. And right here, <laughs> fell <laughs> backwards. I mean, yeah, yeah, fell backwards. How it didn't fall out. I mean, there was sheer no. willpower. In you to keep going. Yeah, I can remember the fight. I can remember. I can. I can, I can just remember. You know. Uh, you know, feeling the ball and knowing that I wasn't going to let it go. But when I look at it, you know, I just say, God, that was just you, you know, and your angels, you know, uh, you know, seeing this thing through. Just, uh, you know, just because He knew my heart that I would make certain that people knew that Christ was the was this was the focal point in all this. And um, you know, it's it's just something that obviously you know your treasure, you know, your treasure forever. And uh, you know, it's kind of like the kingdom coming on the football field. Hmm. Now, had you made a commitment to Christ by that point? Because I know your story just blew me away. Yeah, um, I mean, I made a, I, I, I think it was four years ago. Um, uh, basically, how it, you know how it all started is, you know, as a young guy, I was not raised in a Christian home, um, and ra just raised in a very liberal home. Um, began drinking around 14, and uh, by the time I'm in, you know, pretty much by the time I'm in high school, you know, high school it just increases every year. Marijuana gets thrown in there yeah. a little bit. Um, get to college, by the time I'm in college, I'm, I'm blacking out, you know, having nights, not remembering what I did previous nights. And so those were some of the struggles I dealt with along with, you know, with women, you know, promiscuity and things of that nature. And uh, basically, uh, by the time I get to the NFL, um, not only am I still dealing with those things, but I um, I'm start selling marijuana as well. Mm. So, uh, you know, so, you know, it, it, I found that money, you know, we say the, the love of money is the root of all evil. Yeah. It actually multiplied every dark place in my life because I didn't have, you know, a, a real re revelation or understanding of what it was supposed to be used for. And, um, you know, so I get, I get arrested with a half a pound of marijuana, and that's kind of my road to the masses experience when I really uh, spoke to God for the first time out of the sincerity of my heart. Who, who led you to the Lord? I mean, who was responsible well, for, for leading well, you? Well, it was two weeks later, you know, it was, it was real dramatic. Two weeks later after I get arrested, I pretty much, you know, um, I think it started with that, that sincere prayer I just in the jail. So I just said, God, I need you. And uh, if you allow me to keep my job, I'll be great as well. <laughs> and that was my sincere prayer. And then about, you know, um, even within that time, the work started because uh, I can remember the last time I touched it, you know, I had a beer. And uh, then I, you know, then I was about to drink another one, and it just didn't taste the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was actually before I walked into the church. And, but I walked into the church uh, about two weeks after that prayer, and I just saw this woman. She was singing, you know, singing praise unto God. And and as I looked at, it, I saw how much joy she had, and the yeah. fact that 
I had none. You know, and, I'm, and I, there's 80% of the men in this world would have trade places with me, especially being a young man in the NFL, having those dreams and desires fulfilled. And, uh, and I was broken. And I just began to uh, cry and weep. I wept for about 20 minutes. And, um, and I just quickly gave my life to Christ. You know, that's what's so powerful to me about your message, because it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about the fame. It wasn't about the position. It wasn't about the dream. It was about the pain that was really in your heart. Yeah. You were trying to use things around you to fill it, exactly. but only Christ could do it. Only, you know, he, he's puts that, he puts that vacuum in, in our hearts that only he can fill. And, you know, that's... Uh, that's the power in, uh, you know, in brokenness, and yeah. you know, it's just we just don't welcome it enough in our society. We have to be big, bad, and puffed up, yeah. especially as men. Um, but God is looking for that broken and contrite spirit, and and it's amazing what we can do when we just, you know, th th I say the, the, the fastest way up is down. Yes. You know, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> David, in the NFL, there's uh, a number of Christians, mm -hmm. and uh, many of them have been very vocal about their faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have a chance to fellowship with them from time to time? Um, I, you know, like. Uh, Yes, I've had I've had a chance to fellowship, but not really get close. I've recently gotten close with uh, one of the you know more familiar, Sean Alexander, yes. and everybody. You know, he's been he's been on the uh, you know just I, I say uh, on the marching stand for Christ for mm -hmm. for a long time, and you know we've gotten close uh, over these past few months. But um, other than that, you know, you just meet something going, you you, know, you love on them, you, you yeah. know, you just celebrate, you know, what God has done in their lives. So I've met some great people, but me and Sean have gotten close recently. Is your faith respected? Yeah, I think I think it is, you know. But um, at the same time, um, you know, most most people, especially in the sports genre, there's so much ego and pride, you know, in in, in sports because uh, it's all about self. It's all about you know um, promoting you know one's abilities and one's capabilities, and uh, it's it's exactly the opposite in the kingdom of God. It's about exalting the God who gave us the gifts, mm -hmm. and uh, you know. So uh, you know, but you know, you respect, you know, I respect and love each one's gift and talent. And that's the beauty in sports. And um, but I think there's a respect. And but as you know, I think there's a you know a lot of people are, you know, they have this perspective about you know uh, f about faith and and uh, it being associated with religion. I don't even view Christianity as a religion. Mm -hmm. It's just the truth. It's a way of life. It's yeah. right. a way of life. Now, there's a lot of athletes, and we won't get into names, but you know have have walked the faith, but then have fallen backwards yeah. too. Yeah. And how do you how do you Stay strong, stay with your faith, keep encouraged by fellowship and, and 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 your wife has had a big impact on you too. Yes, yes, that's the pillar. <laughs> Amen. That's the pillar. Amen. We all have Amen. My wife Leala gets it all, you know, she keeps it all she's the glue. Um, you know, obviously Christ, you know, being the, the centerpiece. But um, you know, I, honestly, you know, you have to have that fellowship. You have to have that personal relationship with Jesus. And uh, you know, I think a lot of people have, you know, grown up into religion. They've grown up in Christian homes and um and that's not gonna be a Enough. Christ said you must be born again yes. and uh, you know I think every person has to get to that place where you know we, we make Jesus our own where, where where you can get to an intimate place where you know that you need him where you're self you know self dependent you know he doesn't you know independent spirit is you have to be very careful how independent you are mm -hmm. we have to be totally relying on Christ so um that's 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 what I make to be my sin I have no intentions of going back I don't you know like I, I feel like if I went back a, a lightning bolt would come and strike that's how <laughs> <laughs> He's been that good to me. Amen. Well, God needs you to be a testimony. That's what I'm wondering is what you plan on to do because how many other kids are out there going through the very same thing that you went through with the drugs and the alcohol? Yeah. I mean, what is your plans with this book? Now you've got the stage now yeah. to go minister to these kids, well, to give them hope. We, we've, uh, my wife and I, the Lord has given us a ministry a couple years ago called Next in Line. I'm really looking at, you know, just kind of fine-tuning it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, the, the main thing about what happened in Super Bowl 42 wasn't about me. It was about the platform for the glory of God. Amen. And uh, Amen. I, I recognized that immediately and, and impressed upon my heart to make sure that God gets all the glory. And, um, and so, you know, we, we have youth that we oh, minister yeah. to, 12 to 18. And, uh, you know, we're just trying to raise up warriors. We want them to be activated, not just yeah. poured into and to sit on what God has given them, but we want them to be activated, to be free in, 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 uh, in the freedom that Christ has given them. And so, uh, you know, that's, that's one thing that we'll all always do. And I'm always just, uh, you know, and there's various different ways to help people, you know, through foundations as well. Been involved with uh, International Children's Fund, which ministers to take kids in Africa, well throughout the tri-state area and up in New York. So, you know, just, you know, just being open to, you know, what God is trying to do and hear his voice and be led.